thank you, Mellonport, for organizing this conference. It's been really awesome so far. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about Xerox um, and kind of the open protocol approach to decentralized exchange. Uh, but before I jump into that, I just want to introduce you to our team. Uh, Will and Amir started Xerox uh, about a year ago. And since then, we've grown a lot. And uh, we're kind of a distributed team. But we have a main office in SF in San Francisco. Um, so the world's value is becoming tokenized. I feel like we've heard this over and over again in this conference, so I'm not going to dwell too long on this slide, but kind of our vision at Xerox is that um, a lot of all value in the world is going to become um, crypto cryptographic tokens, and this is currencies, traditional financial assets, digital goods, and naturally all of these tokens need to be exchanged. Um, uh, Xerox works with something called the ERC-20 standard, so this means that Ethereum, as well as any Ethereum-based token, can be um, uh, exchanged over Xerox. However, with, with the advent of Cosmos and, and Polkadot and these kind of relay chains, um, what we imagine in the future is that all other cryptographic assets are going to eventually have an ERC-20 uh, form on the Ethereum blockchain and will also be tradable with Xerox. So, um, Right now, most uh, tokens are exchanged using centralized exchanges. Um, some pros of centralized exchanges is that they're fast, they're relatively cheap. However, they're also single points of failure. And I think the, the count now is that about $2 billion worth of assets have been hacked from uh, centralized exchanges. Um, and they're also custodial, which means you need to deposit your funds, withdraw them, it's cumbersome, uh, and yeah, you're, you're open to third party risk. Uh, decentralized exchanges are open, non-custodial. The smart contract essentially will, will uh, be the only one who has access to your funds and will only move it once a trade satisfies your requirements. However, they are also slower and more expensive um, right now. Um, so some existing work on decentralized exchanges. The first kind of approach to decentralized exchange was to take all the functionality of a centralized exchange and to just put it on the blockchain. Um, great thing was that it was fully decentralized. Uh, not so great things was that it was very slow, very expensive because if you were a market maker or if you wanted to update your order, uh, you had to always make an Ethereum transaction for any m thing that you wanted to adjust. Um, you know, in centralized exchanges, ma makers are used to, or market makers are used to updating orders sometimes 10 times a second. Um, so that wasn't really possible here. Uh, and separated liquidity pools, which I'll get into more later. Then uh, people started to experiment with automated market makers. These were a lot faster. You could just make an on-chain transaction. Um, automated market makers are essentially smart contracts that hold uh, funds, and then they have some sort of algorithm that um, deterministically defines what the price is that, you're, that they're willing to trade at. Um, so instead of having makers and takers trading with each other, they're both trading with a smart contract. Um, because the way that price is determined is deterministic, um, they are gameable. Um, and they're also uh, open to front running, where you put in an order, it's sitting in the mempool, and someone comes along and submits another order with a higher gas price. And, and if their order gets mined before yours, you end up with a way worse uh, um, price for your trade than you thought you were going to get, which is really annoying. Um, then there are state channels. Um, these are very fast. They have very high throughput because they don't rely on, on, on doing all the transactions on-chain. They're decentralized, all very cool. Um, however, they do have quite a bit of upfront cost. So the way that state channels work is you, um, you submit a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain to open up the state channel. Then you can kind of go through a whole bunch of intermediary state changes on that state channel off-chain. And then you do another Ethereum transaction to settle the final state change on-chain. Uh, there's then this period where someone can dispute that someone acted dishonestly, and then there's a final on-chain transaction to receive your deposit. Um, yeah, you have to put in a deposit as well. Um, so all of this uh, is really, really annoying if all you want to do is trade Melon for Gollum. Um, but it's really great if you want to do something like high-frequency trading. Um, the other thing is that it's isolated. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's off-chain, so it doesn't have access to any of the smart contract functionality on chain. Um, so it kind of limits kind of the exciting things that you could do with exchange functionality within smart contracts. And it's not available yet. Um, they're still working on it. 
So what is the OX approach? The OX approach is something called off-chain order relay and on-chain settlement. So what this means is anyone can create an order, which is, which is essentially just um, all the information about the trade that they want to make, who they are, what assets they want to trade, at what exchange rate, uh, what the expiration of that order is, and they cryptographically sign it with their private key, and then they can broadcast it over any arbitrary medium, maybe over a tweet, an email, carrier pigeon, um, and anyone can then take that order and inject it into the Xerox protocol smart contract on chain, and the smart contract checks all of these all of these parameters, make sure that both parties have the assets that they claim that they have, and if everything checks out, it will atomically swap these two assets directly from their wallets. So the funds don't leave their wallet unless um, a trade exists that they agree to, and this is something that we'll talk about with like the smart check analogy. So looking at this diagram, you can see this dichotomy between on-chain and off-chain. Um, so if we think about the functionality of a centralized exchange, um, they do four things amongst others. Um, they hold users' deposits, um, they host an order book, they do order matching, and then they also do settlement, so they'll move the funds. Xerox protocol takes care of, um, well, gets rid of the need for custody of users' funds and also takes care of settlement. But we do not host an order book and we also don't do order matching. These are really important things for, uh, for people to do because you know, that's how buyers and sellers find each other. And that's why we created um, this concept of a relayer. So a relayer is, a f is, is any entity that decides to host an order book off chain and helps people find counterparties. Um, they can be a for-profit entity they can be some dude in his underwear, uh, you know, throwing up a server. It really doesn't matter. Um, so what are the pros of this approach? Low latency when it comes to order creation and updating. The, the market maker can update his order 10 times a second. Um, it's all off chain, so it could be very fast. Um, it's transport layer agnostic, so you could use a relayer. You could just send an email to someone you want to trade with. Or you could also use a gossip network that is decentralized. Um, so there's also minimal blockchain bloat. The only information that we actually store on chain is an order hash to the amount that has been filled or canceled. Uh, relayers get, get to keep 100% of any fees that they want to charge. We're 100% non-rent seeking. And DAP integration is possible, uh, which, which allows you to do some really cool things like token abstraction. Some of the cons, settlement throughput is limited by the blockchain. Um, this is something that we are concerned about, but um, there's a lot of scalability kind of updates in the roadmap as well as uh, other blockchains um, that we could work with. Um, yeah, since, since what we are is a protocol, so we define a message format and we essentially um, declare what the rules are for, for a trade to be uh, compliant, uh, we could implement that protocol on any, on any blockchain. Um, um, front running, there are certain uh, relayer strategies that will allow front running and others that prevent it. Um, order griefing as well, there are a lot of things that you could do there uh, to prevent it. Um, it Xerox is only one piece of this kind of decentralized exchange, um, the decentralized exchange that can be built. And so it really depends on how you kind of configure these other pieces, but they are solvable problems. Um, after uh, building uh, Xerox protocol, we launched a dApp that allowed people to do OTC trades. So if you know who you want to trade with, you could go to our website and you could trade with, uh, with that person. It doesn't host an order book. Uh, it doesn't do order matching. For that, you want to use a relayer. So since launching on mainnet two months ago, we already have five teams building for-profit relayers. Um, these teams are, are, are um, building either API-based or UI-based relayers. Um, some of them I want to highlight here. Kin Alpha was launched in September uh, 25th. Um, it's, it's a very basic one that someone threw up in literally two weeks. They built almost the equivalent of Ether Delta in two weeks. Um, Another one is Radar Relay. They launched five days ago. You can see here, it's a lot more polished. Um, they have uh, more liquidity. Another one that's launching next month is Paradex. 
Um, very excited to see what, what they've built. And lastly, e ETHFINEX, which we've already heard uh, of, they've decided to uh, use ZeroX as their decentralized protocol for now. Um, they might add others in the future, but we hope we can convince them to, to stick with ZeroX. So why this open protocol approach? Um, we decided to go with this approach because we believe that smart contracts should be unopinionated building blocks that can be used by any other application. Um, we also believe that open standards tend to wind out in the long run and we want to uh, work together with the community to constantly improve and, and make Xerox as good as it can be. So w what are these dApps that require exchange functionality? There are a ton. Um, things such as decentralized loan platforms, we've heard of Lendroid yesterday, uh, that want you know, investors to be able to buy and sell loans. We have uh, prediction markets where these prediction uh, tokens need to be exchanged. Um, we have Melonport fund management that also need to allow fun fund managers to, to buy and sell different assets, and the list goes on. Um, so how does one integrate Xerox into a dApp? Uh, programmatically, it literally takes a single line of smart code to, to exchange assets in, in a smart contract. Um, the way that the dApp does this is they pull liquidity from relayers off-chain. They present uh, the user of the dApp with an order that satisfies their requirements, and that order is injected into the smart contract. And uh, kind of the cool thing here is you can uh, integrate this exchange logic with a lot of other logic in your, in your, uh, in your dApp. So, for instance, Lendroid doesn't want uh, people who are taking out these loans to be able to just move those assets and, you know, uh, exit the system. So they can essentially perform checks and, and make it such that uh, a smart contract is the one holding those assets rather than the, the person uh, receiving the loan. Um, this also enables token abstraction. I don't think I can get into it, but I'm happy to talk about it later in the day. So if you wanted to build on OX, we have a JavaScript library with extensive documentation online, super easy to use. If you only know how to build websites, um, you can build a decentralized exchange. Someone built an API-based decentralized exchange in nine hours. It's really easy, and what we really hope is there's gonna be thousands of these. Um, if you wanna integrate into smart contracts, check out our smart contracts docs. Those are all available on our website. A lot has happened since we launched ZeroX. Uh, but things to look for in the future is a standard relayer API where relayers can then connect to each other, pool liquidity, um, and also provide it to dApps. Um, we uh, are also working on our governance model, and we'll have a governance white paper released uh, next year, as well as a trade explorer um, and, and more developer tools. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much. And yeah. Thank you, Fabio. This was the last talk of the morning session. Um, we have a short break now. Get some coffee, get some orange juice. And we're kicking off the next sec uh, session at 11.15 with a panel on the pioneers of decentralized exchanges. Thank you.